In this video, we will be talking about the source and its reflections. For this reason, there are some major spoilers for all content up to the start of the on trail, but especially for Shadowbringer and Endwalker. So if you have not reached that content, beware of spoilers and maybe check out one of my other videos. But now, let's jump into it. A long time ago, when the ancient walked the land of Etheris, there was only the source. Or well, at the time, just Etheris. According to the ancients we know, like Amet Sels, this was a time of perfection, order and happiness, a paradise even. Though with the limited peak we have had into this time, we have seen it wasn't always as perfect as it was depicted, though it was definitely more peaceful than our world today. But this was the world before ours, and the world the Asians have fought tooth and nail to get back. It all started with the final days, the original ones, a calamitous event where creation magic went haywire, twisting creatures into monsters and creating even more horrors from fear of those who sought to fight the creatures. It was a calamity that left the people of Etheris to seek any solution to save themselves and their solution was to summon what would be the first primal, Zodiac. To do this, they sacrificed half of their population, but it was a success as Zodiac did stop the calamity. What followed was a time of rebuilding, and a plan was formed on how to bring back those who were sacrificed. The idea was simple. Part of the planet's living energy from then on would go to the primal as sort of a repayment and in turn, he would resurrect those lost. But not all agreed to this plan, leading to the creation of a group led by Venat, who ended up summoning a second primal, one named Hydaelyn. This one with the distinct purpose of stopping Zodiac and helping prevent a second calamity in the future. The two beings fought, but in the end, Zodiac was imprisoned by Hydaelyn, who then split the star asunder into 14 shards. The source, which we live on, and its 13 reflections. Each living being was in the same way sundered, all except few from the convocation who managed to escape this fate, and those were La Habrea, Emmet Selsh, and Elidibus. Those were the first Asians, those who remembered the time before, and they still wanted to continue with the original plan, though now it was a little bit more complicated. They needed the reflections to merge back with the source. To do this, they would have to go to each reflection and create an elemental imbalance there. This would weaken the barrier separating it from the source, leading to the eventual rejoining. On the source, these rejoinings would be known as calamities, as each one would bring with it devastating effect, leading to natural disasters and much death amongst the people. With time, these calamities began to define the eras. A calamity would start an umbral era of recovery and despair, followed by an astral era of prosperity and growth, until the next calamity would start the cycle again. In total, there have been seven calamities so far, and with it seven rejoining. And with each rejoining, the source would suffer, but the reflection would suffer even more, with the total death of all life there, for his ether to join up with the source once more. So at the start there were 13 reflections, but we know at least 7 of them are already lost. So let's take a look at them and figure out who are still there, who we have seen so far, and which ones we have yet to know anything about. We will start with the first reflection the Asians put their focus on. It was the 13th. They tipped the world to darkness, creating what we now know as the Void. And while the Void can open portals to the source to bring creatures from the 13th onto it, there was no rejoining, leading the Asians to refine their method and sadly succeed from then on. Though the 13th is far from dead, in fact it's a world without death, as life is made out of ether. When someone dies, they return to the ethereal sea, but on the 13th, everything is stagnated. The ether just kind of floats around before reforming back into the creature it once came from. And all creatures there are constantly hungry to obtain more ether, having only one way to get it, and that is from one another. We did visit the 13th during the post-Endwalker patches, 
And while the world is not exactly in a great place, we have still been left hopeful that maybe one day it might find some balance once more. But after the failure of the 13th, the Asians turned to the 5th, and this time they succeeded. They tipped the world to the element of wind and ended up rejoining the source during the first Umbral Calamity. From then on, one reflection would fall after another. The second calamity came from the 12th, being overrun by lightning. The third calamity saw the second overrun by fire. The fourth had the third devastated by the element of earth. Then the sixth fell in the fifth umbral calamity to the element of ice. And the tenth in the sixth calamity, which was the element of water. At last, five years before our story started, the seventh umbral calamity happened where Dalamut crashed to the ground, revealing the great primal Bahamut, which brought with it horrifying devastation. And this was the fall of the seventh reflection, by being overrun by the element of Astral. And that is where the calamities have stopped for now. The Asians did try to cause an eighth calamity by tipping the first towards the light, causing the world to be almost entirely devastated by the flood of light but it was saved by the sacrifice of the Warriors of Light on that reflection, and Minfilia. And things were finally stabilized on the first during our journey there in Shadowbringer. The first is now healing, and with people like Rin and Gaia looking for ways to bring life back to the land overrun by the light, with some degree of success, it is likely that the first will eventually flourish. But. That leaves us with the 4th, 8th, 9th and 11th as the only remaining reflections we have no information about. We know they are still alive as they have not been rejoined with the source yet, but we don't know anything about the life on them, though we can make some deduction based on our visit to the 13th and the 1st. It seems that the reflections share the same geographical appearance as the source as a small part of the first that remains does line up with the Orsian map, and we can see civilization flourishing in similar places as it does in the source, though it's notable that the creature of the source and the creatures of the reflection may look similar, but they can drastically differ in culture. We could see this on the first, as for example the races do not share the same names, and we could also know some vastly different cultures there. One of the most notable ones being the Lalafels of the Source and their counterparts on the first, who are known as dwarves, who have a culture of masking their face at all time. Though of course we don't know which culture were lost during the flood. As on the Source, the culture and history between the different groups of the same race can differ vastly, as we can for example see by the different Aura clans or the large variety of hire found across Etheris. I for one am excited for the time we learn more about the last few unknown reflections. And while we don't know what's happening on those reflections, one thing we need to keep in mind is there is a possibility they are being tipped to some element or another, as there are still unaccounted members of the Convocation. We know of their existence, but not where they are, meaning they might potentially be on one of those reflections, still working on the ultimate goal perhaps even unaware of what has happened. I for one am excited for the time we learn more about those last reflections, though at the moment I am more excited to learn more about the source and the new world as we step into Dawn Trail. But tell me, what are your thoughts on this? Would you like to visit the other reflections? And what do you think we will find there? Let's talk about it down in the comments, and while you're down there, maybe throw me a commendation by liking and subscribing. And in the end, all I want to say is tak for a horva, where you do intis leandag.